Hello there, my name is Gary Sims from Android Authority. Now, VPN stands for Virtual Private Network, and maybe you've heard that term in association to privacy and to geolocation. But what exactly is it? How does it work? And what can it do for you? Well, let me explain. Now, before we dive into VPNs, let me tell you a little bit how the internet works. Now, at home, you've probably got some kind of router or modem from your telephone company, from your internet service provider, and then that's connected to your desktop, maybe via an ethernet cable, to your smartphone over Wi-Fi, maybe to your laptop over Wi-Fi, and so on. Now, inside of your house, when your laptop talks to your PC or your phone talks to your PC, that's part of your private network, and that doesn't go out onto the internet, it stays inside your house. But the moment you open a web page somewhere out on the internet, that data flows through your modem down into your local phone company and then out across the internet. And it will travel across the internet until it gets to the server. The server will then reply with some information that will come back through the internet into your local telecommunications provider, down through to your modem and then back onto your PC or onto your Android smartphone. Now, while all that data is rushing around the internet, it needs to know where it's going. And for things to know where they're going, they need an address. It's the same with the postal service, it's the same when you want to go and visit somebody, and it's the same with data on the internet. Now, there are different layers of addressing, there are different types of addressing that go on, but at the highest level, each of these packets of information have what's called an IP address. Now, the IP addresses, you've probably seen them, they're those four digits from 0 to 255 with dots in between them, so maybe 178.34.67.120, something like that. Now, your modem, your router, has probably been assigned an IP address from your ISP. And what happens then is that when your data goes through the internet, every piece of equipment it touches, every router, every server it touches, knows that IP address especially when it gets to the web server at the other end, that web server will probably log that IP address and log what it is that you've requested. And the reason it's done that is not because it's trying to spy on you, but because it's actually trying to connect, collect data about the number of people that are connecting to the website uh, when the peak periods are, and for data analysis, basically, for traffic analysis. But of course, there's another thing that we need to know about IP address, and that is that they are assigned in blocks. So if you have an, uh, an IP address, all of your neighbors and all the people in your area will have the same IP addresses within the same block. And there is a database that tells you where these blocks of addresses are assigned. That means that when the data arrives at this web server that you're connecting to, it has a pretty good idea of where you are from, certainly at the country level, most definitely at the city level, and maybe even down to within a couple of blocks of where your actual house is. If you don't believe me, go to whatismyipaddress.com and you'll see what information that can be found out for, about you just by going to that web page just from your IP address. Now, of course, normally that's not a problem. The fact that I go to Twitter isn't going to cause any problems for anybody. However, if I start to access stuff that is maybe a bit more sensitive, maybe I have a, a physical problem I want to read about on the internet, maybe I have an emotional problem, maybe I want to look about a top topic that is taboo in my culture or in the country that I live in, then suddenly these different, the fact that these servers know where I'm from and know about my IP address is a bit more concerning. More than that, most governments throughout the world have a system where they can demand from an ISP the uh, actual person that was assigned a particular IP address on a particular date. So if they then come in and they say, well, we want to find out who was reading about this particular topic, they can come uh, to my ISP and say, give us that data. Now, depending on which country and depending on which laws are enacted, that can be a quicker or a longer process, can be more difficult, can be with more supervision or with less supervision, but basically every state around the world has access to that information. Now, it's not only governments we need to be worried about. For example, if you're in a coffee shop, you're sitting in Starbucks and you're thinking, great, I've got coffee, I've got free internet. Now, these open public Wi-Fi hotspots are actually quite dangerous. It's not difficult for anybody with a bit of technical knowledge to take a laptop and sit in a coffee shop and to capture all of the data packets that are flowing around in the airways. And because the, uh, the Wi-Fi point is open, then actually none of that data is encrypted. It's very easy to get hold of passwords, to get hold of lists, or lists of websites that are being accessed. It's even possible to get hold of contents of emails. Now, of course, there are software levels of encryption. For example, WhatsApp 
just implemented end-to-end -end encryption. So if that was captured, it would be more difficult for the hacker to get the contents of your messages. However, an open free Wi-Fi hotspot is basically open for access both for good and for bad things. So please, please do not do any online banking or access websites like PayPal when you are connected to your coffee shop's Wi-Fi. Just don't do it, okay? Now, another interesting thing about IP addresses and about geolocation is that if I try to access content that is a video content particularly, that is for a particular country, if I'm outside of that country, I don't have access to it. Now, let's just take a simple example. Let's say I'm traveling and I want to get access to my video streaming service, I can't if I'm outside of the country. Now, that's because the IP addresses that arrive at the video streaming server, that says that IP address isn't in this country, I'm gonna block access to that. So some types of content is blocked depending on which country you're in. And another interesting thing actually is that pricing is different depending on which country you're in. Now you can try to buy some, maybe some cloud storage or maybe an online service. And if you try to buy it in maybe the United States, it will be a different set of pricing than if you try to buy it in Europe. And also in fact, uh, ExpressVPN recently did a study where they found out that actually if you buy airplane tickets, the price of exactly the same flight with exactly the same number of people from exactly the same airport is different depending on which country you actually connect from when you try to buy those tickets. So geo-fencing, geolocation actually changes things about how we access the internet, how we purchase services and how we buy goods depending on where we are. Now what a VPN does is it allows you to create a tunnel, a connection from your home computer to a server somewhere else in the world. And that connection is encrypted. And then when I access something on the internet, it goes through that tunnel and then it arrives at that other server and then it goes onto the internet and it will finally arrive at the web server or the service that I'm trying to use. But the IP address will no longer be my IP address that's on that data packet. It will actually be the IP address of the VPN server. And what happens is that when it replies, it replies to the VPN server. The VPN server says, oh, I know who this is for. It actually needs to go back down this encrypted connection to this client who has connected to me. Now that allows for a whole bunch of possibilities. For example, first of all, your local telecommunications provider and your local government have no idea about the sites that you're accessing when you go through the VPN. It's all encrypted. Now, once it goes beyond the VPN, once it comes out of the VPN server, of course, it then goes back into the open. It goes back past all the different routers and things it needs to get to the website. And the website itself will register the fact that a certain address has come to it, but the address now will be that of the VPN server. That also means that actually it thinks I'm in a different country. So if I'm trying to access media, video streaming content, if I'm trying to buy things, then actually it might set the prices or give me access or block access, now depending on where the VPN server is, not depending on where I am. And thirdly, if I'm using open Wi-Fi, then actually now that initial connection from my laptop out to the internet is actually completely encrypted. So if there was somebody sitting in the a uh, coffee shop connecting with a uh, tablet trying to, a uh, laptop trying to connect, capture all the packets, actually they won't be able to get that much because it will all be encrypted. Now, how, how does this work? What do you need to do? Well, the first thing you need to do is get yourself a VPN service. And there are a myriad of different VPN services available on the internet. Personally, I would recommend ExpressVPN. They're really good guys. Now, when you connect, when you subscribe, what happens is you get given a username, a password, and a list of servers. Servers in Europe, servers in America, server, servers in South America, servers in Asia, servers all around the world. And basically you say, I want to connect now, create a virtual private network, a tunnel, from my laptop, from my PC, from my Android smartphone to this particular server in this particular country. Now on Android, that's really easy to do. In fact, ExpressVPN have an app. You just download the app, you put in your username and password, and then you just tap the server that you want to connect to and it will create that tunnel, that connect, that encrypted connection to that server. You can also do it manually through the settings page. You can create uh, VPN connections. And that's the same on Windows. You can do that on Windows, you can do it on OS 10, you can do it on Linux, you can do it on Chrome OS. You can even do it on certain types of routers. So actually a VPN is available across many, many types of devices. And then once that connection is made, all your data traffic, all of your stuff you're doing will go through that VPN out onto the internet in a different country and then 
further abroad where it needs to go. Now this all sounds great, but are there some downsides? Now there are a few downsides. The first one, and of course, is that you're sending your traffic deliberately, maybe in the opposite direction to where the service is that you need. So if I'm in Europe, and maybe I make a connection to a VPN that's in Asia, and then I try to access a website that's in America, what's happening now is I have to send the data halfway across the world, and then halfway across the world again to get to that server. So of course, it's gonna be slower. Okay, you're routing the traffic all over the place and it's going to be slower than if you were connecting directly to that service. Now, also it could be slower because the VPN provider has a limited number of servers and it has a limited number of bandwidth. So therefore, if there are lots of clients or it's a particularly busy time of day, then connecting is going to be slower because I'm actually busy with all the other people. Now, one of the difference in an expensive VPN service provider and a cheap one is the amount of bandwidth and the number of servers they've got. So that's something to watch for when you're choosing a VPN service provider. And of course, the other thing is that some countries actually find, have made uh, VPNs illegal. I won't mention them now, but you do, it won't take much for you to do some research to find out that if you're in certain countries and you try to connect via a VPN, actually that is a frowned upon activity. And actually that activity itself could get you into trouble more than maybe accessing certain types of website. And the other thing is that some services actually block uh, access when they see that a VPN is being used. And Netflix has been in the news recently because it's making strides to try to block VPN access. And when it sees an address that it's recognized previously as a VPN server, it will just block access and say, you can't get in here. So as a summary, whenever you connect to the internet, an IP address is used to route the traffic to the server and back again. The server will probably log that address and it will also be known by your phone company. The government has access to that data if it uses the right legal framework to ask the phone company for that information. But also just the mere fact that you've used an IP address, it actually can give away quite a lot of information about where you are. When you're using public Wi-Fi hotspots, when you're buying things online, uh, these things are open and these things are controlled depending on where you are in the world, which means you may not have access to certain things or you may have to pay higher prices for certain things. Now a VPN allows you to connect to another server in another country and then to connect further onto the internet. It has the advantage that it's a different geolocation, which means you can get around certain access restrictions and it's encrypted, which means that if you were using uh, like your local coffee shop, those date that data is now encrypted. My name is Gary Sims from Android Authority and I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to Android Authority's YouTube channel. You really should download the Android Authority app so you get access to all of our content on your mobile phone. And last but not least, don't forget to visit androidauthority.com because we are your source for all things Android.